welcome you saints of God to our testimony service this afternoon. Truly God has been good for us. Hallelujah. And we're here just to show him thanks, just to give him thanks for all that he has done for us. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you are here this evening, you're hearing me. I just want you to open your microphone and say, lift up the name of Jesus, because we're here to worship together. Hallelujah. Are you Praise hearing the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We praise your name, Lord. We honor you. You're a faithful God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Thank you, saints of God. Hallelujah. We're going to have a quick consecration service and then we're going to go into the testimonies because I know we do have burning testimonies that we want to share with each other. We want to tell each other about how, you know, the Lord has done so many things in our lives. Glory to the name of Jesus. And we want to rejoice with you, brethren. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We place you at the highest place. For you, you are the great high priest. We place you high above all else, above all else, and we worship you, and we give you all the praise, we bless you. At the highest place for you, you are the great high priest. We praise you high above all else, above all else, as we come to you and worship at your feet. Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that has brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Bless the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. He's worthy this afternoon. At this time, I'm going to invite Overseer Clinton Smith to pray for us as we go into our testimonies. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn on your microphone, Overseer. Bless God. Our Father and our God, we give you thanks for another time in your presence. We thank you, God, for the way you have led us over this weekend as we celebrate, oh God, this great time of reviving, this great time of worshiping, this great time of honoring your name. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and for all the blessings, Lord, that your children have received. 
O oh God, as we have come to this time, Lord, we forward to bring a close that we want to give you thanks for. We just humble our heart before you, Lord, and ask you to help us that we will live according to your will. And that, Lord, the things, O oh God, that we do and say each day will only bring glory and honor to your great name. I pray your blessing upon tonight's service, O oh God. I ask you, Father, that you will continue to pour out your anointing upon your people. And Father, even those who have experienced your miracles, and Lord, in a moment, will be telling about your goodness. I pray that you will give them, Lord God, a new touch. Inspire them, Lord, that even as they proclaim your love, as they proclaim, O oh God, uh, the goodness of God to all those who will hear them, that, Father, something in that will bring uh, some hearts to you, will cause someone to recognize you. I pray, Lord God, that you will back of darkness tonight. Everything, oh God, that would come against worship. I pray, Almighty God, that even the airwaves that sometimes become so congested and Lord is not giving good service, go forth with power. Oh God, with uh, clarity, and that those who hear, Lord God, will be drawn closer to you. I pray for an anointing of an every person, Lord, will be ministering in service. Let our hearts be truly blessed, be truly lifted up. Oh God, and even now we pause to thank you, Lord. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for all the good things that you have done for us. And we ask that you will help us, O oh God, that we'll always be grateful to you for all the things, Lord God, that we have received. Have your way now, Father. We commit this night's worship in your hand. And we pray, Holy God, that you will take your place right in the center of our worship tonight. And that all honor and glory, Lord, will be to you. And your blessing will flow in abundance upon your children. Have your way now, we pray, Father, as we commit ourselves into your hands and we wait at your feet for all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Overseer. Bless the name of Jesus. So we have a 24. Bless Praise the name the of Jesus, saints of God who are ready and waiting to testify of the goodness of God. So we have 25 persons to rejoice with and more persons are joining as we speak glory to god god is a big god hallelujah and we just want to share bless the name of jesus so at this time i open the floor bless the name of jesus so that we can share of tell us of the goodness of god help us let us rejoice with you hallelujah and we know that the testimonies lord god will help us to go along you know, we're going to say, boy, all of us are Christian, so we know sometimes, you know, a Christian walk, we, we want to hear about this, the, the, how God good in other Christians' life too, and that will help us to go a little further because sometimes we feel so burdened down. Sometimes in our lives we say, Lord, where are you? Show up for us. And when we hear that he has shown up for other persons, we hear how you have come through. We know that we too can make it. Help us to whatever you, are, you went through. Some of us might be going through it now. And when you testify how God brought you through, we too can say, I know the Lord will bring me or us through. Hallelujah. So at this time, I'm going to invite us to share. Or we can, we can use the raise and the feature. And then, then I'll just call the names that are there so that uh, we can have order. Bless the Lord, as I know everyone will share. Glory to God. So I see Sister Wright, her hand went up. Glory to God. Share with us, Sister Wright. Bless God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, to God Lord. be the glory. Bless the name of the Lord. You know, since evening while I was having my shower, the Holy Spirit reminded me of how I used to have the pile. Bless the name of the Lord and how the Lord has healed me. I used to have the pile. It was so terrible that I did not even want to go to the bathroom. And even sometime when I go to the bathroom, it was just red like blood. But today I want to 
give God tongues that he can heal even pile. Bless the name of the Lord. Now I can go to the bathroom freely without fearing or anything. And I want to give God thanks. I want to give him all the praise and the glory and the honor. This is my testimony in Jesus' name. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Wright. Glory to God. Thank you. So Jesus, God is a healing God. He is a healing Jesus. Glory to God. So we rejoice with you, Sister Wright, that you came through. And we know that as a person who might be suffering in the same way that the Lord will come through for them as well. Glory to the name of Jesus. I, I, I don't see the hands coming up. Bless God. But I know their testimonies. Let us not be afraid. We, we join because we want to testify. Because we want to rejoice with each other. Glory to the name of Jesus. So I know we are going to testify. Bless God. Bless the name of Jesus. The floor is open. Bless the name of the Lord. What has God done for you today? Hallelujah. Glory to God. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Testimonies, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and what he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. Tell us how the Lord has saved you. Bless God. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. So God did not provide any Sunday dinner today. Oh, oh. Oh, bless God. Sister Powell, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is good god is good god is good i cannot stress it enough and god is indeed a healer praise god um in october month of prayer um i was saying to one of my church sisters that every october that comes for us to have um joint prayer across the ministry i always come under attack and uh, this year as I entered into October, I was okay. I was doing well and I was geared up for prayer. But when I got to the closing of October, there was one night um, I was on the six to nine shift. And that particular night after the shift ended, I said that I would go to bed early because I was on call for work that night. So I, the meeting ended at nine and by 9.15 thereabout, I was in bed ready to go to sleep. And then I dozed off. But then while I was sleeping, I felt like the Holy Spirit woke me up and I hear wake up. And I opened my eyes and when I looked at the clock, it was exactly 12 midnight. And then as I lay in bed, I heard war, war. I heard it three times, war. And I got up. I did not know what I was to war about. I did not know what it is that would happen, when it would happen. But I followed the Holy Spirit. And I got up and I started to pray. I started to worship. I was just allowing the Holy Spirit to lead. And by the time I, I went back to bed, it was some minutes to three. And then I dozed off. And I remember I felt like a presence came into my room. And immediately I started to feel sick. I just started to feel ill. And I couldn't understand why. I woke up and I was just sick. I was just sick. And I got up and I went to work. And I didn't say anything to anybody, but I knew in myself I felt so sick. And I kept praying and I kept talking to God about it. 
and it progressed for three days, but the Holy Spirit was just comforting me and telling me to continue to war, continue to war. And one night it got so bad. I mean, even when I went to the a &E department and they were checking and they were trying to figure out what was wrong, they could not come up with a diagnosis, but I knew it was spiritual. And the night before, I went back home, they did a blood test and brethren, everything was out of range, everything. And the doctors were saying, you know, didn't you feel this kind of way before based on what they were seeing? And I said, no, I was perfectly fine. And I just got up and I felt sick. And they were telling me that this could happen and this is what happened. And that night I came home and I said, Lord, I feel so bad. I feel so sick. I don't know how I'm going to continue. And while I was sleeping, I felt like I started to have fever, headache, everything. Everything was going bad. And I said, God, I feel like I'm going to die. I just feel like I'm going to die. But I didn't say anything to anybody. And I dozed off again and I started to dream. And in the dream, I saw like the Lord came to me and he, he in the dream, I, I was sleeping and he woke me up and he said, here, drink this. And he gave me something to drink. And when he fed me with it, he fed me with it. And in the dream, I started to feel better. I started to feel better until in reality, I started to feel better. When I got up, I was completely different. Every complaint that I had went, it just left. And I said, God, you know, you healed me. You fed me with something and I'm healed. And I went to work and I was telling my colleagues that I feel so much better and everything. And just because I wanted to prove God, I went back to the a &E and I said, take my blood again, test it again. And they took it and everything that they tested before that was out of range, they repeated it. And I went back for the results and everything that was out of range, it came back normal absolutely normal there was no more discrepancy there was no more out of range everything just returned to normal and I said yes God thank you I proved you once more that you are a healer and every you know the doctor was asking me what did you do I said I went to bed and the Lord visited me and he fed me and I am healed and that was my testimony to them and God is indeed a great healer. So I am perfectly well now, no more complaints. I didn't have to take any medication. I didn't have to go and do any procedure on anything like that. But God himself showed up in my dream and he gave me whatever it was. And tonight I can declare that I am healed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. He is a healer. Glory to the name of Jesus. And uh, bless the name of the Lord. So too, so many times we go through so many things in our life. Sometimes we can't tell anybody about it. We just have to take it to the Lord in prayer. Remember, there was a time when the Lord went to heal someone and there were so many doubters. He had to put them out. Hallelujah. So, so it is sometimes in our lives. Bless the name of Jesus. We can't say anything. We just have to go to God in prayer because... The, the, the minute you say to somebody, it seems like things just start getting worse. Hallelujah. So many doubters. So let us continue to trust God that he will come true for us. Thank you, Sister Powell. Glory to the name of Jesus. He is indeed a healing Jesus. He's a bomb in Gilead. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Testimonies. The floor is open for you to encourage us, brethren. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. First, I must welcome the Holy Spirit of God. I am so happy that I can be a part of convention tonight online. God has done many things in my life. I can't complain. I just want to continue to hold on with this man, Jesus, because my, my determination is just, just to continue to serve him. You go pray for me while I do the same for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Aldwin, Lord to God. Yes, good evening to everyone. And to God be the glory indeed, great things he has done. Well, I, I am giving God thanks because I wasn't one who would normally pray, pray and pray. But having been a part of um, Brother Wright and Sister Wright praying team between the hours of 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. during the week, the month of October. That was really a blessing. 
I was feeling pain in my right hand while praying for others and um, worshiping God and giving God thanks. But I will tell you that that pain in my right hand, I think it was about the first week of November and I would have been in my kitchen one Sunday, just doing my normal thing, preparing my meal and so forth. And I would have dropped the bowl out of my right hand. I'm a man who carry a much bucket of stone, cement and sand and all those things. And I'm telling you, when it dropped out of my hand, it's like the tears come down my eyes and I was like saying, Father, enough is enough. I need my healing now. My cataflam that I was taking was, has now been finished and I got a new prescription to fill it. And I just say, in the name of Jesus, I'm not going to fill this prescription. And today, from that time till now, I am feeling no pain in my right hand. At times when I tried to brush even my hair, I couldn't even brush it without discomfort. But to God be the glory, great things he has done. He is still a healing God. He's still the great healer. So we just have to have faith and believe in our God and Savior, Christ Jesus, because he will come through for us if we just lift our faith and believe in him and continue to pray without season. Just pray and believe and praise God for the victory. And this is my testimony in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Aldwin. Glory to God. So many testimonies of God's goodness and his healing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sister Solomon, bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of God. Awesome. God, I'm rejoicing with the testimonies. My God, God has been indeed good. But I just have to tell you something that, praise God, um, when I just enter, you know, into Christendom, I can't remember. I was always, you know, very, very shy. I can't remember. I was asked to pray one time in Bible, in Bible, um, in, in, in Bible class. Hallelujah. And Brethren, I'm telling you the honest truth. I remember Pastor Edwards after the prayer. I remember saying, the Lord is something. But because the fear just stepped me over, I did not finish that prayer. I was so scared. And I can say that I was on the six to nine shift, which is Deacon Wright and Brother Wright. And we have been praying nonstop for one whole year from last um, prior, um, October prayer meeting till this year. We have never break. And Brethren, I don't know where I get this boldness hallelujah i just realized that my god i'm just a different individual i am more dwelling in the secret place of the most i god i have a relationship with jesus now hallelujah and my testimony is this to tell you that whatever the lord said hallelujah you're to do you must do it i remember one day i was um seeking employment praise god Send out the resume, do everything that I was supposed to do. And this particular job was an internal, hallelujah, was internal, meaning external persons was not supposed to get this job, was not supposed to apply for the job. And I remember my girlfriend who works um, within the group sent the, the link to me. And I said, oh, how, yeah, like I was saying, how oh, you can send something to me, it's internal. And she was like, listen to me. She gets so upset. She said, listen, you're going to apply for this job. And I did exactly what she said. And Bridget, I applied for the job and I leave it. But I was just doing God's business. I was doing, I was going to church. I was going to women's fellowship, but I wasn't working at the time. Hallelujah. I was doing the Lord's business. I remember I took my son to school and there was this lady who came so close to my car. I could only get out. And then when I came out of the car, it kind of squeezed the windscreen. I was like saying to the lady, I mean, look how much space in the car um, parking space. It comes so close to my car. And she was like, um, you know, like she was just saying something. But anyway, I just walked off. And I remember saints of God for the entire night. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit have me remembering the lady. And all he was saying to me, go and find that lady and apologize. No really matter if you wrong or she wrong. No really matter. That is not the case. Just find her and fix it. And I could not understand why I was getting this feeling. 
And every morning I got there, I couldn't see the lady in the top. But one day I saw her, but she was leaving. And saints of God, I ran down the car because I had to deliver <clears throat> and do exactly what the Holy Spirit said to do. And I stopped her and I was just talking to her. I was like, you know, whatever happened, you know, let bargains be bargains, you know. You know, probably we were both not having a good day. You know, whatever, just make it felt so good. I was saying to her, you know, and, you know, we just squash it out. Let me tell you something. I got the call for the interview now, what internal work is, you know, and I got the call, I was favored and I got the call and I went to the interview. <laughs> Let me tell you something, when the panelists them come in, you know, the woman, the same lady with the Holy Spirit, tell me to go fix it with her. She was one of them who was on the panel, Lord Jesus. So you know, so if I didn't do what the Holy Spirit said for do, I probably wouldn't get the job. So everything I was talking, she was so in agreement with, she was so calm. She never let me have a hard time because probably that particular time, whatever the Holy Spirit tell me to, it fixed our heart from them time there. And guess what? I got the job. So to God be the glory, man. Anything what the Holy Spirit said for do, it's full, it's on full, full enough, but just do it. Praise God. Glory to God. Jesus. We have to listen to the voice of God and be obedient. Bless the name of Jesus. Thank you, Sister Solomon. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Wow, that was beautiful. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid to open your microphones, brethren, and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. I see Sister Jennifer Anderson, she wants to come, come on, Sister Jennifer, cheer with us uh, of uh, the goodness of God in your life. Hallelujah. Shall we praise yeah. the Lord? Shall we bless the Lord? Bless the name of Jesus tonight. I am thanking God that he spread my life to see another day. Brethren, Sometimes you testify a testimony, but you have to testify again to let somebody know how God is and who God is to you. I remember a couple of years back, it was um, in 1993, there was a crusade that came into Barbican by Pastor Aleman that passed off. And I got saved in that crusade. And Virgil, let me tell you something. I got a stroke in that time. And I remember the crusade came into Barbican. I was living in Barbican in St. Andrew that time. And the crusade came up there, but I, I woke up the morning um, to get myself together. And I could, I just find myself dropping back down. And Virgin didn't know that I, it was a stroke I was getting at 27 years old. And Virgin, the crew said came, I could not move. One side of me, the left side, is anywhere I go, somebody have to leave me. My mouth was twisted and everything. But the crew said came and I, um, I remember when I hear the song, then playing, and I sat in my room in the bed. I, no, I couldn't move because somebody had to leave me. And for some reason, I don't know how I get up. This must be God. And I got up that even my mother said, where are you going? And she said, well, you, you, you're not afraid to drop down. You, you know, somebody to carry you. And I said, I don't know how I walk. Lean up, you know. And I reach up at the cruise lady, six man of food. Time me down by the, the pulpit. And Virgin, here I am. I got another stroke a couple years after. I was living in Paris Hill at this time. And Virgin, there was a water bill that came to the premises for $32,000. And I was not working at the time. And when they check it up, they say, I must pay $8,000. I don't even have $0.08. Cent. And I went to my bed and did not wake up. I got a second stroke. I went into a coma. And I remembered, um, couldn't speak nor anything. The same side I get it on. 
but I felt somebody was on top of me. And when I, um, I think somebody just pressing on top of me, pressing on top of me, pressing on top of me. And it's like, I was not responding. And then when I look, the person threw some olive oil in my mouth and said, death, I cancel you in the name of Jesus. And when they threw the olive oil, it was my sister because she was living on the bigger side, I was living on the smaller side. And um, when she threw the olive oil, she heard a cough and it, it, um, the olive oil came up in my way in there. They took me to university hospital and everything. I could not speak. All I could do was to write with one of the arm. But tonight, here am I. After two strokes, here am I. Who could it be but God? And tonight I am rejoicing because I know the God that I serve. Many people have gone through not even death road, half of what I've been through. I've been in two comas. And here am I. Virgin, when I when I praise God, people don't understand why I praise God. Sometimes people say, Why are this man I make me have too much noise? But this is joyous noise. The songwriter said, You are to been there when the Lord saved me. You ought to been there when he gave me the victory. It brings joy down in my soul. Write my name on the heavenly wall. You ought to been there when the Lord saved me. Brethren, some people not got you nothing. Nothing not got you, right? And your sister Jennifer was talking about fear issue there, like woman with the issue of blood. Sister, them they are not nothing. A small thing that the God heal. A similar walking, praising, jumping, shouting. I can't afford to stay quiet because I know in whom I believe in, brethren. And when I shout, I know it has shout for victory. You pray for Sister Anderson because I mean well in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. From we started, we have been hearing about the healing Jesus. Hallelujah. And even now, some of us are going through situations and we've been praying for healing. These testimonies are just telling us that God is still in the healing business and that, that He can do for others what he has done for others he can do it for us as well glory to the name of jesus thank you sister anderson hallelujah glory to the name of jesus i want to welcome the persons who are just coming on glory to god welcome to our testimony service where we get to share with each other where believers get to hear the testimony of other believers because oftentimes we don't know what is going on in others life and we look and we say boy that person, and you don't understand that that person rejoicing because God has done so much. You don't understand that other person is going through that. We don't know. We won't know until we share. So we're getting the opportunity now to share with each other. Let us share, brethren, because I can tell you that when you share, it helps somebody along the way. Glory to the name of Jesus. I had, um, because we're so... Many of us are here, and I know all of us want to share. You can use the raise and the feature, and so I'll just uh, I can be able to use that now to tell who can come after the person who is sharing. Bless God. So I don't see any uh, hand. Hallelujah. But I know their testimony, so I want us to share. Bless God. Testimony. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. All my life, he has been faithful. All my life, he has been so good. Hallelujah. He has been good to us, brethren. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I too have a testimony. So I'll share my testimony while they are until the person start formulating their words and put the use the hand feature. 
so that I can see like 10 persons coming in to share. I can say, yes, this sister, go ahead. Brother, go ahead. Bless God. I too have a testimony of the goodness of God. I have so many testimonies of how God has brought me through. Bless the name of Jesus. I remember in 2019, hallelujah, I was going to work one morning and this gentleman came out of nowhere and slammed into my car. Bless the name of Jesus. One good lick, brethren. Bless the name of the Lord. And I remember after the car, it, I had the, the earbags and so burst in my chest. Hallelujah. And like the, 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 the scent from black, the scent from the earbags, I felt like I couldn't breathe. And I was saying, I can't breathe. There was a little boy in my car, car back. Bless God. When I looked around on him, he was bleeding. Bless the name of Jesus. And I said, I couldn't, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And this madman brethren came across the road and who opened the car door and said, teach, come out of the car. Bless the name of Jesus. And I mean, it's a madman, you know, good, good madman. And he said, uh, come out of the car, open the, the, the car door and say, come out of the car. I think he even held my hand and, and pulled, um, helped me to come out of the car. And uh, another vehicle took us and the other gentleman to the hospital. Bless the name of the Lord. And I know the enemy tried to, to kill me that time. Bless the name of Jesus. And when that was not good enough, hallelujah, my sister just, she had... She had so many uh, blood issues. Bless the name of the Lord. Her, um, she had a, a blood clot in her leg. Bless God. And that, uh, 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 along with the blood clot, bless the name of the Lord, she was bleeding. So when she went to the, 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 the doctor, she, he said she should go and take a test. When we brought her to do the test, bless God, the, um, the, the, the person doing the test said, you need to find the hospital immediately. So we brought her down to the hospital. Hallelujah. Um, and when we brought her to the hospital, they, they, they didn't really know how to treat her because if they tried to um, get rid of the blood clot with any thinner, she was already bleeding. So she would have bled out. And they can't start, then we're going to give her something to um, harden the blood now or to make it become a little thicker because she had the clot. Bless the name of Jesus. So it was prayer all over, prayer all over. And when that was not good enough, bless the name of Jesus, the enemy hit again. We were coming from the hospital another night, hallelujah, in another car. And this junkie man out of nowhere come across the road and boom, right off that car again, hallelujah. And Bridgerine, that was just attempts at our life, hallelujah. But God, but God was just, he was just there, hallelujah. I remember another night we were going to, I think it was a rally, hallelujah. And we were in a church brother's vehicle. And when we got to this part of the road, a vehicle just come out. I mean, he, the, the gentleman was coming up the hill. And you know, when you get to a hill, you have to stop to see if anything is passing. And I don't know if the gentleman stopped or never saw it or anything. I just know that he, 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 he it's like the, the vehicle was in jump off the hill, brethren, at the vehicle we were in. And the brother um, who was driving the vehicle, he, he had to speed off so that he could get out of the way. And then he said, no, man, this is serious. Every, like, so it was just after us. Bless the name of the Lord. Like, pure attacks. Bless the name of Jesus. And through prayer, bless the name of the Lord. God delivered us. So I can tell somebody today that God is a, he is a keeper. He's a protector. So many times the enemy tries to wipe us out. And I can tell you, Virgin, if you get the chance, he'll wipe you out. He'll wipe out your family too. Hallelujah. And if he sees that he cannot get you one way, he's going to come another way. Bless the name of the Lord. And we know that even when we testify, he comes again with something. But tonight, we pray that the Lord will lift up a standard against him, even on the name of Jesus, so that when we share, hallelujah, God can be glorified, hallelujah. And that when we share, hallelujah, somebody can come out of their struggle. Somebody can know that, you know, I'm going through something, but I know that God can do it for me. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. God is a good God today. Hallelujah. He is a wonderful God today. So brethren, let us not be afraid to share. Hallelujah. Let us not be afraid to tell somebody of the goodness of God. Glory to God. Testimonies, brethren. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Bless the name of Jesus. Testimonies, brethren. Hallelujah. This is testimony service. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Um, God has been good. God has been extremely good. When I look and I see, are you hearing me, brethren? Yes, we're hearing you. Bless God. Hearing me? Yes, we're hearing you, sis. Oh, great. Yes, I'm saying when I look and I see how the Lord has taken me through, I was um, pregnant in 2018, and the Lord took me through a healthy, successful pregnancy. A lot of things can happen growing a child inside of you. So many complications when I read online and I see the different experiences that persons go through. And for nine months, the Lord took me through no complications. Hallelujah. He took me through. He covered myself and the baby. Everything was going on around me, but nothing touched me or the baby. Every day I look and I say, God, thank you, because it never had to be that way. Anything could have gone wrong. Yep. A pregnancy comes with many complications, many attacks, but the Lord covered us under his blood. Hallelujah. He covered us and he kept us. And for that, I just want to tell him thanks today. And that is in, it is only one of the many things that he has done because he continues to be good. He continues to cover me and my family. He continues to be faithful. And I just want to exalt his name today. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be exalted. He's worthy to be lifted up. He's worthy to be magnified. Words are not enough. A testimony is not enough because he's done too much too much i can't keep silent and it's hard for you to be on here pulling us to testify but i don't want to seem like me too enough you know sometimes you don't want to seem like you're too enough but i have to say that god is good he's good and he continues to be good and i just want to lift him up tonight hallelujah god bless hallelujah. you all hallelujah. hallelujah glory to god bless the lord praise the lord yes sister Ilarine. yes praise god Praise God. I, when I think of my life, it is a life of testimony. I, I always, God has been so faithful. God has been so true. I just want to share this particular testimony. I remember I was doing a master's program about a year or two ago. It's 1.5 million. And I must tell you, I did not take a loan to pay for that master's. I've always, once I went to the, the, the person in charge and I was like, give me, a, give me two days to bring up the money. He wanted 300,000. And I said, he said to me, um, if you don't bring it by tomorrow, then you are going to be deregistered. And I had a little saving pan at home that I normally drop a little bit of money in the saving pan. And I came home the night and I break the saving pan. And brethren, when I reach 300,000, I stop counting. When I reach 200,000, I stop counting. I don't know how God... I don't know when $200,000 reach in that saving pan. That's how awesome God is. Then I was doing a maths course. I am just not a maths person. And I was struggling with this maths course. And I said, God, I need a way out. And I did the first test. Never do so grand on it. Then I said, God, I need favor. And the lady, well, I, said, I said to my friend, tell us the lady if we could do a take-home test. And she said, no, we can't do any take-home test. And I must tell you that it, God worked it out in such a way that we did two take-home tests. And I have so many maths teachers that was more than willing to, to help me. God worked it out. I got an A- minus for that course. I must tell you that we serve a faithful God, a true God. And when you are in the valley, 
It doesn't mean he will never, ever, ever, ever leave you nor forsake you. He is coming. So I just want to encourage somebody, hold on to Jesus. The hand that never failed, the friend that stick it closer than a brother. He is good, he's faithful. He has healed me so many times. And I am still going through, you know, because I'll be doing surgery soon. But that's how awesome our God is. Those are my few words. Praise God. God. Shall we bless yes. the Lord. Wow. Praise God. Bless the name of Jesus. This Hallelujah. is Sister Amory Simpson Muir. Praise God. Sister Ellarine, sister. And I can endorse what she just said. And I can also share a personal testimony as it relates to math. And you know what, brethren, what is so important about these testimonies? When we hear the other testimonies of other believers, we are reminded of God's goodness towards us. Praise God. I too struggled with math. And when I was in, um, at the time it was CAS, called CAS, now it's University of Technology. Because of my struggles with math, I failed first year math. I failed second year math. And I said, God, this cannot work because I could not go through three years of college and don't come out with that piece of paper. So I really buckled down. But at that time, they allowed you to continue the course even though you failed. So I passed third year maths. And that summer, praise God, I buckled down with the maths. So now I had to reset first year maths and second year maths to be able to get that diploma. And I got one of those very thick book. And I was working on first year math in one side of the book, second year math in one side of the book, praise God. And so I had to reset both maths that summer. And you know, God is such an awesome God. It's so hot that I walked on campus. I think it was a Saturday. I walked on campus. I don't know why I was there, but I went on campus and I was, was walking on the blocks that we had classes. And I happened to like just pass by and heard a math class happening. Not my teacher, not my class. And I just presented myself and sat in the back of the class. And brethren, would you believe it? The gentleman was re revising the math that was going to take the exam that was going to take place and when I listened I, I stayed there for the entire class and the man reviewed everything that was coming on the exam bless God I said God you are more than awesome and when I went to sit first year math and second year math that summer I passed I said God it could only be you and there, there are many more testimonies but as Sister Ellery mentioned about the math I said, God, you have come through for me. And I was able to graduate with my little piece of, I wouldn't say a little piece of paper, big paper, because in those days it was diploma. And God came through for me. And I can tell those of you on the line, the young people on the line, I have been there and God has not failed. He, he, I always say to myself, God, when you come through for us, all I can say is that you just marvel me because only you could have done what you did. So brethren, be encouraged. We go through the furnace, we go through the fire, we go through the testing, we go through the trials, but we serve a God who does not fail. And when he comes through for us, he comes through in a way that we can encourage others and we can share the testimony and we can be strengthened to know that he is with us. He never fails and he continues to be our amazing God. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Marie. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Testimony, brethren. Just keep the testimonies coming. Glory to the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Bless God. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I'm so blessed to be a part of this great convention. Praise the name of Jesus. I can join with the songwriter in saying, are you building on a sure foundation that the floods can never sweep away? Are you grounded in his great salvation, ready for the final judgment day? And the chorus goes on to say, are you building on the rock or on the sinking sand? And today I've learned something in service, praise the name of Jesus, that the, this foundation is not compromised. Praise the name of Jesus. And I'm glad to know that I am building on this sure foundation. Praise God. So when the storm comes, when the billows roll, when the winds blow, firm will be that house because it is founded upon the rock. 
God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. you, sister. Brother David James. Bless God. Bless Hallelujah. Just want to worship God. Just want to give him all the glory and all the praise. You know, testimony service is really from a tested life. Bless the name of Jesus. And I couldn't sit down and not testify. Bless the Lord. I just want to give God all the praise and all the glory. There was a situation for me at my workplace and I was very much upset about it. You know, to the fact that I was saying, you know, I was telling my wife that tomorrow when I go to work, I'm just going to just tell one of the girls that peace in my mind because, you know, basically she disrespect me in a way that I didn't like. But nonetheless, I were there, we're talking about the situation. And, you know, it almost want to make me look dishonest in a way. And I was saying, you know, I took that very much offensive. But then I came on the evening, I asked for a meeting via email. And they said, okay, we'll meet two days later. So two days later, the night before, I go in my notes, my phone, and I start to write some things I want to say. And, you know, I was saying, you know, this is what I'm going to say when I get into the meeting. And, you know, Chelsea said to me, Mr. David, just pray, man, just pray about it. And um, God will lead into what they say. And Bridget and I tell you, when I went into that meeting, I went into that meeting and I sat there listening to everybody. And they were talking and talking and talking and bridging. There are more things I wanted to say. But I was there and I did not open my mouth, not even one time in the meeting. I didn't. What happened was that another person brought up the same situation that that girl was going on with that work. And then when they spoke about it, the, sit the situation that I was facing was basically trashed out. So I didn't have to worry about speaking about it again. And I'm like, God, you know, you're really good because look at this. I have so many plans, written notes, written down what I want to tell and say in this meeting. And then when I realized that I didn't have to say not even a word to even the boss said to me that, oh, Mr. James, are you okay? I said, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, man, I'm fine. And, um, if I want to say anything, I said no. But I just know that God really hears and he answers prayer. Bless the name of Jesus. And this is my testimony. God bless you in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Brother David. Glory to the name of Jesus. We're almost in uh, to the next session, Bridgerine. It's time for you to share quickly so that we don't get into the other session's time. I know you have the testimonies to share with us so that we can know, you know, hear about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Remind us. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We are thankful that the Lord provided dinner tonight. He provided breakfast. He woke us up this morning in our right minds. Glory to the name of Jesus. He healed us from so many sickness that we didn't even know. Bless the name of Jesus was trying to hit us down. There are so many things he has done for us today. Glory to God. Testimony, brethren. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? Hello? Lord, Lord, hear me? Praise the name of Jesus. This is Mexican, even though I'm at work, but I just want to say God is a good God. God is so awesome. God is so wonderful. You know, I said to the Lord, Jesus, I don't really want to work on Sunday. So Lord Jesus Christ is either you save this boss or move her. And Lord God Almighty, she's going to leave Lord Jesus. And God sends somebody who's going to give him a Sunday. So I have to I give God... <laughs> Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we serve a God who hears and answers prayer. Jesus. Glory. Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. I said, I don't have to work on yeah. Sunday anymore. I said, God said, the Lord said, we must ask and it shall be given. Seek and we shall find. Knock and it shall be open. So thank God that I don't have to really work on Sunday anymore, starting the first of January. We serve a God. I said, we serve a mighty God. 
We serve a God that cares for his children. We serve a God who provides for his children. We serve a God who hears and answers prayer. I cannot feel long because I'm at work now. So God bless you. Continue to pray for me. Sing, God, God, God. I love you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I love you all in Jesus' name. Bye. Hallelujah. 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 Shall we worship Lord. the Lord? Hallelujah. the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I have testimonies. Bless God. But tonight I'm I'm going to remind you. I, I, I it's a long time testimony, but I'm going to remind you. Some of you maybe have already heard it. Glory to God. It was one November, like no, I don't remember quite remember the year, but it was women's convention. Bless God. It was a Saturday. We had the, we were having the display. And I was coming from Portmore, bless God, which we're, I'm driving the red pickup at the time. And we were coming over with stuff in the back for display. But um, coming on it, it, it in the morning, Saturday morning, there was a little, it was a little, rain was drizzling. But then it stopped. And then while we were coming, when we reached past Ferry Police Station and we were coming, Bridget, the pickup just turned off the road. And the pickup start to run faster than if somebody faster was driving it. It was running so fast. We couldn't stop it. I mean, over, over, and they not in the road. It turned off the road. After we passed the police station, coming up and we left near, coming up to six miles. It run off the road and just running in the open and running. And it couldn't stop. But before it, it went across, go over, and this, and that was how it, it stopped. But before it stopped, when it hit on the embankment, you know, my, my seat belt wasn't fastened. It was working good, so it wasn't fastened. And I, I went forward, bless God, and my head, my head hit the windshield that it cracked. But until this day, I have not gone to doctor for my head. There wasn't even, I mean, the windshield was cracked because we had to change it. But I didn't even have a cocoa in my forehead, as we would call it. Not a little raise, not a swelling. And, you know, until now, I, I don't have severe headaches. I don't have headaches. And I, I, I didn't go to the doctor when we went up the church got it back on the road and went up the church and we were telling the virgin and one pastor was saying no you, you you i need to take you to the doctor you sure and i said no i am okay i'm here and i'm you know i'm giving god thanks bless god for delivering me bless god that i can hear an another ladies convention to give a testimony that god had delivered us Amen. Bless God. I'm, I'm here alive today and in one whole peace. God bless you. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Sister Smith. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We have uh, come to the end of our testimony service. I know we have many more brethren who wanted to share. I know we do have many more. However, we are in the time of the next service bless the name of jesus so at this time glory to the name of jesus at this time i am going to invite sister susan aliman to pray to close off this segment hallelujah and after that i will hand over to the mother moderator for the next service sister chisan thompson hallelujah Good evening. Exactly what is Sister Herlock? Yes, Sister Chisan. 
we're closing off this section and going over into the evening. Me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Are, are you hearing Mrs. Hutchison? Are you hearing me? I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. Right. Something I'm is wrong with my phone. I, I realize we're closing off this section, the testimony service, and we're moving into the evening service. So I'm asking you to pray to close off this section and uh, to pray as we enter the evening service. Time, mighty God, to honor your name and to thank you for all that you have done. Mighty God, you have been good. You have been good, and words are not enough to express how great you have been. So, mighty God, as we close out here right now, as we enter into on the next segment, I pray that you will be our light and guide. I pray the Holy Spirit that you will anoint on the speaker afresh. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will do your work that only you can do this evening, Lord Jesus Christ. Have your way. Take over. Take control. As we look to you, I will tell you thanks for all that you are about to do, all that we are about to do to experience thank you jesus have your way and take all the glory all the praise hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah glory to the name of the lord thank you brethren for sharing thank you sister Susan. at this time i take pleasure in handing over to our moderator for the evening service sister shakilia solomon bless the name of jesus sister solomon over to you glory to god Sister Solomon. In the name of Jesus. Good night, everyone. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I will be the moderator for tonight. My name is Shaquille Solomon. Um, I'll be co-moderating with Minister Derek Rounds. He's on, Minister Rounds, yes. Indeed, I'm very much here. God. Amen. Praise God. Go Let ahead, me greet man. God's wonderful people, our overseers, pastors, whoever, in their respective capacities. We bless the Lord, amen, that we can continue in this, our final session for this weekend celebration, and we continue to give God the glory, to give him the honor. As you would have heard, myself and Sister Shaquilla Solomon are co-moderating for this final session. Amen. And we just praise God for his goodness and his mercy toward us. Amen. As we continue to reflect on the theme, Christ in the crisis, my firm foundation. Just going to ask you, amen, if you could open up some of your microphones and just, amen, utter some praise in the atmosphere as we continue in worship this evening. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Yes, we honor him this evening. We exalt him. Amen. Praise God. Bless the name of Jesus. I don't know if my moderator has anything she wants to say before we 
Amen. Call for the prayer to be done. As the team said, Christ in the crisis, praise God, is our yes. firm foundation. I, when I think about the team, praise God, I was just thinking about, hallelujah, as children of God, Amen. hallelujah, we're, you know, stretchable, but not breakable, hallelujah, yes. hallelujah, Amen. in this praise Christ, God. you're being stretched, children of God, but you will not break, you yes. may feel that the pressure, hallelujah, is on, yeah, man, it's pulling you left, right, and center, hallelujah, it's like you're losing the shape, yes. hallelujah, but you will not go under, and when Lord. I think about it, you think about, you know, sometimes I said, God, you are the potter and we are the clay. Yes. But I just want to encourage you that, you know, a clay in its own form, just a clay alone by itself, hallelujah, it will not stand. You will break apart easily. You yes. need something else to withstand this pressure. You need a Holy Amen. Spirit, praise Amen. God. But the Spirit of the Lord will make you stretchable and not breakable. Hallelujah. Just like mm -hmm. Jabez. Hallelujah. If you're telling God, because we're praying, you know, if you're telling God to enlarge your territory and your yes. border, you must get ready to be stretched. Don't yes. it? Praise Lord, God. God. And Amen. if you're hallelujah. in the fire, hallelujah, yes. hallelujah, it will burn. But guess what? You have the capacity. Hallelujah. It can't Praise burn you. Hallelujah. 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 It, it, it is just there to reform you. Yes. And remember the story of the three evil boy when they were in the fire of furnace and what happened, the fort man activated and yes. this team said, God is our firm foundation. So the cure of the crisis come, hallelujah, to twist us. We will bounce back. Yeah, man, we'll get yes. back. We are coming out, hallelujah. Yes. It's, we're we're going to pull through. So hallelujah. the spirit of God will keep you stretched without you being break. The word of God will keep you enduring. The word of God will keep you, hallelujah. His okay. grace will keep you, hallelujah. Praise I mean, Christ. the adversary thought, Satan may think, hallelujah, that him could break you, hallelujah, yeah. but you're going to stretch to any Glory. form. When a tempestuous storm come, you're going to stretch. Yeah. You're going to form, and guess what? You're going to bounce right back. Oh, the persecution praise. will come. It will not tear you apart. So Amen. what am I saying tonight? You're built to last, children of God. Yes. You are not going under in this crisis. Um, crisis is your God. firm foundation. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. I hope you enjoy tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Well said, my co-moderator, Sister Solomon. Well said. And we just continue to worship him. Our deacon Philip Walker will be coming at this time to pray with us. And after he's through praying, our region four team members will be leading us into a moment of praise and worship. So Deacon Walker, at this time, will pray. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Rounds. I Amen. want to greet everyone in the mighty name of Jesus. Greetings. Let us pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you thanks this moment, O oh God. We lift you up. We honor and glorify your name, O oh God. Truly, you are wonderful. You are awesome, O oh God. Lord, as we go to our conference, oh God, we thank you for carrying us this far. Lord, so far we are going on very well. We thank you for the servant, the message you have prepared and use your servant to deliver to us. We thank you for it, dear God. And we pray, Lord, that you who start a good work, we know that you are able to continue. So Lord, as we are going through this evening, oh God, the final session of it, we pray merciful God that you will be with us continuously. You will help us, oh God, that whatsoever say and do this evening will done to your honor and your glory. Father, I pray that, oh God, when we leave here, we will truly get something from this message, oh God. We'll open our heart, oh God. We'll set our mind, oh God, for changes so that we will follow, oh God, knowing that you are there in the crisis. Don't care what crisis we are going through, oh God. You will allow us to stand, oh God, as a firm foundation. Because you, oh God, is more than the enemy. And we know with you on our side, we can smile at any storm. So help us, oh God, to remember these things and not to give in, not to give up, but to stand firm, oh God, in everything we do. Bless and protect now, merciful God. Take control of the rest of the evening. We say thanks in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Deacon Walker. 
Although our mics will be muted, let us join in the worship as the team leads us into a moment of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Praise God.
talking to my phone.
Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Hallelujah. Praise, praise be to God. Hallelujah. Brethren, just being in the eyes of Jesus is just a blessing. Hallelujah. Just worship. Continue to worship behind your mic. Hallelujah. God has been so good from Friday night up to tonight. We have been feasting. We have been hearing the word and we have been having an awesome time in the presence of the Lord, praise God. It's like we're in the house, but we are not in the house. Hallelujah, we can connect, hallelujah, to our over with our overseas, hallelujah, brethren, and we can just bask in the presence of the Lord. God, good enough, God is just so awesome. Praise God. So the scripture reading will be done by Sister Jennifer Anderson, which is Roman 8, 31 to 39. Then after Sister Jennifer Anderson, you will hear Minister Kemar Thompson, who will, you know, just make us welcome, let us just feel so good. All right. So Sister Anderson, then the next voice would be Minister Kemar Thompson. Sister Anderson. Praise God. Good night, Bertrand. Good night, Sister Anderson. Good evening, Sister Anderson. Scripture is taken from Romans 8, verse 31 to 39. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spareth not his own son, but delivereth him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, is as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, 39 and ended, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. You say, thanks be to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me first acknowledge the presence of the Holy Ghost who has been here on from Friday night. Amen. We thank him and we give him all the glory, all the praise. Let me acknowledge the presence of our general overseer and presiding bishop, Bishop Arthur Brown, and first lady, Pastor Beverly Brown. Amen. Praise Almighty God. Let me acknowledge the presence of all the region overseers that are on tonight amen i want all the brethren that are on from region one just to unmute your mic and shout a hallelujah and as soon as you're finished unmute mute again hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. amen Let, let's say if region two has a stronger hallelujah all the hallelujah. brethren from region two hallelujah 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 right. Hallelujah. Do we have region three in the house tonight? 
Legion 4, let me hear a great hallelujah from you. Hallelujah! Region 5. Region 5, you're all the way across the sea. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God richly bless you. To all our unsafe friends that are on tonight, God richly bless you. We welcome you in the presence of the Lord and we pray that a word will reach you tonight and to help you in whatever situation you are. God richly bless you and feel welcome in God's holy presence. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank you so much, Minister Kemar Thompson. I'm sure we're all energized. Amen. After being able to open our microphones and to shout, Amen, to each other. And so it's a wonderful thing. Amen. Under in, in previous times, we would have not had this opportunity that we could have everyone join, irrespective of where. We are physically located. And so, although, amen, things are somewhat yeah, unusual, yeah. amen, there is so many yeah. blessings yeah. that we have been yeah. able to yes, unearth, yeah. even out of the challenging yeah. times that we have been having. And, you know, one of my favorite scripture is that of Psalm 92 and verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name. Almost time. So, I mean, we are grateful to God for such a luxurious blessings. Amen. We have been, amen, assembling since Friday evening. I'm sure many of us are tired. We have had two sessions so far today and in our third session. And so we are not going to be long this evening. And so we're going into the offertory section at this time. Amen. We have been seeing the way that we can contribute throughout this weekend. And so that will continue to be the medium through which we can contribute. So uh, as the praise team also prepare themselves to do an item um, for, for the session where we'll collect the offering. I'm also gonna be asking our minister Aiken if he's available to pray um, for the offering that will be given by God's people and our praise team to do a number um, just for um, that session while that is being shared on the screen. Minister Aiken, are you there? Yes, sir. Amen. Let us pray. Praise Mighty God and eternal Father, I truly thank you, O oh God, for your continued love. Lord God, as we are about to give a portion, mighty God, of the blessing you have given unto us. Lord God, I pray this moment, O oh God, that we search deeply, mighty God, in our hearts, O oh Father God, and give up mighty God, as we expect of you, mighty God, daily to bless us. Lord, Lord God, I pray we may not withhold our blessing, mighty God, may not withhold our substance. Lord God, I pray, mighty Father, that this evening, mighty God, we are so moved, wonderful God, to contribute to your work. Oh God, we have seen where we have moved us, mighty God, in different territories, mighty God, in different eras. But Lord God, today, Father God, we want to contribute to your work, and I pray, oh God, that our contribution, mighty God, will continue to, mighty God, enhance and enlarge, mighty God, your work here on earth. Bless us, God. Multiply our baskets as I lift you up unto the thanks in your holy name, Lord God. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you so much, Minister Aiken. So we have that information shared on the press team. There's one number um, for this session of the offering. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All the screens that have joined this day, as you tune your hearts into this to the song, bless the name of Jesus, what it blesses your heart. Bless God. <laughs>
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. Stay in me, Jesus. Hallelujah. I hallelujah. offer up myself, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Saints of God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you're behind the mic. I am muted mic, but I'm going to give you hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank mic, you, Jesus. And just give God some praise. Hallelujah. Just open your mic and just praise. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. God is so good. Hallelujah. It's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We don't have tongues to give him enough praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah is um, Sister Chelsea Aleman James. Sister Aleman James is going to do an exaltation. Praise the name of Jesus. So Sister James, hallelujah. The floor is yours. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know you were just asked to unmute your mics, brethren, but I'm going to ask you to unmute your mics once more and to just magnify the name of Jesus because he truly deserves all the glory tonight. He truly deserves all the honor. He truly deserves all the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Let's just unmute your mics and just magnify his name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for all that you have done. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All protocols observed tonight. Greetings to Bishop Arthur Brown, Lady Brown, and to the international president, both men and women, Pastor Ferron and Minister Taylor. Greetings to the executive body. Greetings to one. Greetings to all to our friends and visitors, even on the greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, I speak to you briefly on the theme, Christ in the crisis or firm foundation. And when I heard the theme, I was inclined to look for the meaning of the word crisis. And the meaning of the word crisis from one source tells me that it is a time of intense difficulty or danger. Yeah. When I went again and I looked for the word foundation, the foundation, one, one meaning I got was support on, upon which something rests. Brethren, as we go through our days, day by day, we go through crisis. Day after day, we go through crisis. But it is the tendency for us as human beings to focus on the problems and not God himself. I want to encourage us tonight to remain focused. I know we're looking at the theme tonight, Christ in the crisis. But my message to you tonight is to remain focused. Why are we to remain focused? Because the crisis was made. It was designed to get, to get us distracted. And we can't afford to be distracted. Brethren, I want you to understand that when Christ came, Christ came and he came to fulfill a purpose. When Christ came, I can just imagine he, he was going through emotional distress because so many things were going awry. He was being led to the cross to die for wretched people like you and I. But he still kept focus. He stayed praying. He stayed fasting. He stayed delivering people who were in front, who were bound with demons and devils. He kept focus. Brethren, I mean, when the, there's so mountain of stuff, we can use this. And Brendan, even as I speak to you tonight, I want to speak to you from a personal place. Because for myself, I've been employed for maybe nine months i started a new journey i was almost working with demons and devils the per they were so evil 
see things they would tell liars and I remember I was speaking to my mother one and she said to me, listen to me, where is the power that is in you? I don't want to hear you complain about this job. When I complained to my husband, he said to me, you know, just hold on just a little while longer. And I didn't understand because I'm saying, why am I holding on to this job? For me, I was going through an emotional distress. That was my crisis because day after day, you're going in, you're dealing with people with different personalities. You're dealing with this issue and to be truthful, sometimes the issues, they take up much more of your time than even the, pers- the, 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 the job role in itself. And I contemplated so hard to it. And I remember coming this close to, re- to, to writing my resignation. And I remember God sent this lady from work and she said to me, listen, this is your test. This is your test. Because if you don't pass this test, then you're going to get the test again. And I, it, it brought me to do some introspection. And I thought to myself, where I used to work previously, the same thing. And I said, God... I'm just going to keep pressing. I'm going to keep pressing. Brethren, and for the weeks and for the months to come, I meditated deeply on the life of Jesus Christ. And as I mentioned to you before, Jesus knew so many things. He knew that Judas would betray him. He knew exactly what Peter was up to. He knew that they would deny him. He knew so many things. But he stayed praying even when they didn't watch with him, he stayed praying. Job knew. Job knew. But Job said, but when he had tried out as pure, I want us to understand that when we go through the crisis, the crisis is made to break us, but we have to stand firm. We have to stand firm. The word of the Lord said, this guy going not but by prayer and fasting. If we're not built with the word of time, Glory be to God. While I was going out, going through my situation at work, I remember um, because of how intense it was, I would just go to work and I would just sit and I would just not say anything to anybody. And I remember God speaking to me and he said to me, you need to exercise the fruit of the spirit. And the fruit of the spirit, which is love, you need to exercise that. And the moment I started to exercise that, I, I had maybe the three best weeks at work. Because every time they would come, I would just exercise love. And so they would almost think I'm crazy. But, I mean, had I not been, stay, had I not stayed in Christ, had I, not, had I not stayed planted in Christ, I would not have gotten the solution to the problem, brethren. I want to encourage you tonight because I want you to understand that while I'm going through, I stopped focusing completely on the, on the, the hardship. I stopped focusing on the crisis in which I was going through. And I started to just do what the Holy Spirit bid me to do. Birthing, I applied for a job. And when I applied for the job, my general manager called me and he said to me, I had no idea you were interested in such a job. Why did you not say it? And I said, to be honest, I only saw the vacancy published and so I applied. He said to me, can I have you know the position is filled? And I said, okay, sir, well, for what it's worth, I only applied um, just to get the job. And he went on to say to me further, okay, this is it. I have, so It's muted. Sister Chelsea, you're muted. Bless the Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. It happened so quickly that they took me on to fill a position in which they, they designed for me. They designed this position for me. And I wanted to understand that had I stayed focused on the crisis, I probably would have run away from the job. Hallelujah. But God would not have it that way. God would have me sitting there. The scripture tells us tonight that we are led like a lamb to the slaughter. I sat and I endured. I endured. needed to endure because Job said in, his, in, the, word, in, in, in the book of Job. Hello. No. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of Job, Job declares, and when he had tried me, I will come out as pure gold. I shall come forth as pure gold. And I can tell you tonight, brethren, I am not. Hallelujah. I am not the same person that went in when I started that job. I am not the same person that went in when I started a job. My foundation is more secure in God because I stayed 
there were days when I'm going to work and I'm just because I'm just so over it. I would go into my car and sometimes I couldn't even find words. Sometimes it was a song just bursting from my spirit. I could only sing a song. Sometimes I'm going in the car and sometimes I'm just praying before God and I'm saying, God, remember me. This is too much for me to bear, but I want to encourage you tonight, brethren. Stay focused. The crisis was designed to make us run. The crisis was designed to make us curl. But tonight I want to encourage you to stay in the word, stay in prayer, stay in fasting, because that is how we will overcome. God bless you all richly in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, Come on, shout a praise unto the Lord. Yeah, Amen. God. Shout a praise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the Lord, oh wondrous Praise story. It is the Lord, the King of glory. At his feet, we humbly fall. Crown him, Lord of all. If we all should testify this evening, amen, would not have enough time because indeed we can all, amen, testify of the many afflictions that we have undergone, amen. But we can declare through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. Praise God. And one writer said, press along, saints, press along in God's own way. Persecution we must bear, trials and crosses in our way. But the hotter, the battle, the sweeter, the victory, when you can reflect, amen, that you have gone through agony and pain and trials and you see the fruit of that which you have borne, amen, it, it, it gives you more pleasure, more appreciation, and you understand why the Bible would have said, amen, that is a sin to feed a lazy man, amen, because by the sweat of our bro, amen, we shall eat bread. And so when we undergone, amen, the different challenges and the different testing and have come out like the scripture declared, Job says, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. And he declared, amen, that he know the way that I take. And when he, God himself has tried me, amen, there's a consolation that comes with that. I shall come forth as gold. Oh, somebody just lift their hands and declare, amen, that although I'm going through my testing Hallelujah. and my hardship, amen, the end result shall be that I am going to come through. For the word of God declared, this poor man cried. And the Lord heard him. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. Amen, that after we cry, there's a response that comes to soothe our cry and our pain. And the Lord heard him. And deliver him out of all his troubles. No wonder the writer said, It's truly wonderful. It's truly amazing what praises can do. And so we just continue to bless God. Amen. We don't have, if, if I should continue, I, I feel so excited, but yes, I have to contain yes, myself. Yes. Amen. Praise I have to restrain God. myself because, amen, when you have your own experience and your own testimony, Amen. It, 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 it informs the way that you operate. Yes. Oh. So that's why sometimes I tell people, give me some pass. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> give me some weight. Yes. Let me praise God. Praise him. It wasn't easy, the songwriter says. But it was worth it. Hallelujah. Because sometimes people don't see us. When we are in our closets, when we are crying and expressing Hallelujah. ourselves to God in agony and bitterness, Hallelujah and tears Hallelujah. sometimes all they see is the outcome oh Lord bless the name God. of jesus but because you know Hallelujah. what causes you to have that glorious outcome Praise it him. causes you to operate different amen. amen you praise god like you have no sense amen bless the name of jesus you can't keep your seat because you are in constant reminder of the faithfulness of Almighty God. Praise Let me stop God. now. Let me stop now. Let me stop now. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I see Pastor Marcel Solomon on. I'm going to ask him, amen, to just bring greetings to us at this time. And after he's through the praise team, amen, we'll do a song. Amen. And my co moderator will come back on and amen, proceed as the Lord leads. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless praise God. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Glory to God. Solomon? Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be to God. Praise God. 
Thank you. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Go ahead, Rev. Praise Jesus. God. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me just bring greetings to the convention. Let me greet our general overseer, Bishop Arthur Brown, and his wife, Pastor Bella Beverly Brown, to all the God's minister and servants, the various youth presidents, men's president in their respective places. I just want to bring you Christian greetings in that wonderful name, the name of Jesus. I must testify that it has been a blessing uh, just to be called a child of God, even at this moment. I have really enjoyed what God has been doing through this convention, glory to God. I believe that it is a very fitting team, Christ in the crisis of a solid foundation. I believe that the theme speaks for itself, that on Christ, the solid rock we stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. So we thank God for that wonderful and awesome foundation to which we can stand today. Stand in the midst of adversity, stand in the midst of cruelty, stand in the midst of an environment that is so vile and vicious, but we thank God that the foundation on which we stand is Jesus Christ. We can stand firm, glory to God. So I just want to thank God for that foundation. I just want to thank God for the church of God in which we can stand together in unity and one accord. May the blessings of God continue to be upon the servants of God in this convention. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Glory Praise to God. God. Praise the name of Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Solomon. Hallelujah. Always lovely to hear from you. You always have the word just pat like that. The Lord richly bless you, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. It is time we're going to be hearing the word. Hallelujah. The song said, Hallelujah. We need to hear from you. Hallelujah. We need a word from you, Lord, hallelujah. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? Praise the name of Jesus. So we're gonna ask Sister Chelsea Aleman James, praise God, to introduce the night speaker, praise God. And before Sister Aleman James does that, can we have just one more song from the praise team? Just one more, praise God. We need to just lift up the name of Jesus. He's indeed worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Just one more, Brother um, David James. One more. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. All right, so we're not hearing from David. Seems that like they're having a delay, but that's okay. Praise God. When Israel out upon the sea, a sea before the blade, the Lord reached down his mighty hands and rolled the sea away. Then forward still this Jehovah's will Though the billows dash and stray With a carpet thread we will push our head And then roll the sea away Then forward still this Jehovah's will Though the billows Dash and stray with the conquering tread, we will push ahead and roll the sea away. Then forward still this the old sail, though the billows dash and stray with the conquering tread, we will push ahead. And roll the sea away. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Go ahead, Sister Chelsea. Introduce the next speaker. Praise, Praise God. The Lord, tonight, our speaker comes to us. Minister Janet Taylor, the three teacher, and the teacher of the country, was asked to speak to including head of the Department of the Agricultural Science. She was the great supervisor, project coordinator, and system administrator for the e-learning projects. Mrs. White Taylor is a minister of religion of the Geisel Cultural Church of God. In her secular study, she holds an executive master in educational management from the Michael University College, a master of science degree in agricultural Sorry. in agricultural diversification from the Universidad Nacional Pedro Enriquez Urena. She also holds a Bachelor of Science degree in agribusiness management from the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus. Minister Taylor in 2010 was awarded the Certificate of Excellence in Teaching from the Jamaica Teaching Council and the Ministry of Education. She's a tremendous asset to our church, school, and community. With all her achievement, Minister Taylor is first and foremost a woman of God. With all being said, I want to take the time out, brethren, to invite to the platform Minister Janet White Taylor in care of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, we're hearing you, Minister. Lord and Christ. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Tonight, I want to greet the Holy Spirit, and I want to greet all God's children in the wonderful name of Jesus. I'd like to greet my Bishop, Bishop Arthur Brown, our General Overseer, and wife, Pastor Beverly Brown. I want to greet all the overseers and their families, all the pastors and their families, all the ministers and their families, all the brethren are on the platform today, tonight, all God's children, visitors and friends, I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. It's a pleasure for us to be here at this time, worshiping God in the joint conference. I also want to greet the men's president, Pastor Ferran and family. I greet all the members of the executive body from the men and the women's department. I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus. Tonight, I'd like to speak on our theme, Christ in the crisis, my firm foundation. Past speakers, they have defined crisis for us. But I just want to add, if we are not careful in a time of crisis, we could become toxic, we could become poisoned or become poisonous. We could also become, become contaminated. A crisis, if we are not careful, could kill us. But tonight, thanks be to God, because our foundation is laid on Christ Jesus, we can actually give thanks and glorify God in a time of crisis. And tonight, I want us to do that. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so tonight, I want to take us to a few verses. I want us to look at verse 35 of Romans chapter 8. I want us to also go back to look at the crisis that Anna went through in 1 Samuel chapter 1. And I also want us to look at a portion of St. Matthew chapter 7. And so I want to read for you tonight from Romans chapter 8 and verse 35. And Paul said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No one can separate you and I from the love of Christ because Jesus has already given his life for us 
His blood has been shed for us and no one can prevent you and I except ourselves. We are the ones who will be more quickly. We are the ones who sometimes want to separate ourselves from God, but no one can prevent God from loving us. So Paul said, what then shall be able to separate us from the love of God? And Paul said, shall tribulation, and by tribulation, it refers to the afflictions, trials, sorrows, troubles, pressures, and hard circumstances pressing down on us in everyday life. But when Paul looked at the tribulations around him, he said, none of it, none of this, no trial, no matter how severe, will separate us from the love of God. He then went on to look at distress. And he said, shall distress separate us from the love of God? And by meaning of the word distress, it is a narrowness and distress of being confined in a tight and oppressive space. And many of us, we experience that during this time of the COVID-19 crisis. We feel like we are being squeezed in and there is nowhere for us to go. But Paul said, not even distress, nothing can squeeze us out of the love of God. The worst disaster only draws you and I closer to him. If that was not enough, Paul asked, shall persecution. Persecution is a word for being hunted down like a wild animal put to flight and driven away with hostile force. It is to pursue with hostile intent because of your love for Christ. But Paul says, persecution, no matter how severe or intense, will never sever the love of Christ from you and I. Then he went on because he said, because sometimes all of us as human beings, we have our own weakness. So somebody may say, no, sir, not persecution, not distress. But Paul asks again, shall famine, and famine is hunger, doing without food because of being driven from their homes by persecution. Persecuted Christians have been driven from their homes and jobs to wander amid strangers in desolate places. A time is going to come when we'll ask ourselves that question again, shall famine separate us from the love of God? That was not enough. Paul said, shall nakedness. And when we talk about nakedness, is a lack of sufficient clothing because of being reduced to poverty by their enemies. The poverty is so severe to Christians that they will be unable to purchase clothing. Shall any of these things, my brethren, separate us from the love of God? Shall peril. And when we use the word peril, it is a danger of any kind, natural or legal, to which Christians are exposed because they are believers. The idea is to be at risk or face danger. Paul went on to say, shall sword, and this is used figuratively, here to mean a violent death. Christians are executed and murdered because of their faith in Christ. The man who asked these questions, Paul himself was murdered because of his love for Christ. And so Paul asked the question. And sometimes when we ask ourselves the questions, we said, no, but I want us tonight to reflect upon the time that we are living in. Because are we willing to say that death is only an open door in a deeper and more wonderful experience with Christ Jesus? I want us to understand that as we move forward and as we coming down to the end of the session tonight in this convention, I want us to say with confidence and with clarity and by faith that nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. But sometimes as Christians, in the one Zoom meeting, we soon call back. things offend us. Simple things bother us and it will be the simple things that will prevent many of us from make it into heaven and therefore 
I want us to understand that being a child of God means that we are going to go through a crisis, different crisis at different times of our life. We are going to come under intense pressure, but I want us to hang on to Jesus tonight. Hallelujah. I want us to say, Jesus, let nothing, let no one separate me from your love. And so I want to move on now to look at the story of Anna, which is found in 1 Samuel chapter 1. And for time, I'm not going to read that chapter, but I want you to follow me. I want you to understand tonight, brethren, that for every crisis, there is a Peniah. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't know who is your Peniah tonight, but for every crisis we face, there is a Peniah. There's yes. always a source of constant irritation. And the Peniahs in our life, their number one goal is to make our life miserable. And so Anna went through a crisis and there was a Peniah that troubled Anna, that caused Anna to fret, that caused Anna to cry. But thanks be to Jesus. Hallelujah. He stand up for Hannah. And we want to give God thanks that the crisis that Anna went through, it could not separate her from the love of God. Sometimes when we go through our crisis in life, we are not understood. Yes? Most times our crisis, it may result in the spirit of misunderstanding that people don't understand the intense pressure we are going through. As a result, sometimes we have disappointments and our feelings are hurt and those feelings never get resolved. But I pray in the name of Jesus tonight that every spirit of misunderstanding will get out of our way tonight. Hallelujah. And worship God in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, like the crisis time that we are in, Anna went through a period of crisis. This crisis that Anna went through was not for one month, was not for one week. The Bible said she went through this crisis over a period of years. And I want us to understand that when we are barren, that's a crisis. The image of the barren wife is one of the Bible's strongest images of desolation and rejection. Anna's husband thought that his love for her would remove her pain. However, nothing except for a child could take away her sense of desolation and loss. Sometimes when we go through a crisis, we want to find other things to assist us apart from Jesus, but I want somebody to know tonight that Jesus, he is the solution in whatever crisis you're going through. So the Bible said, while Anna was going through a crisis, when she fret, she cried, she wept, she became troubled, she couldn't eat. The Bible said, there comes a time in Anna's life when Anna said, I have had enough. And so the Bible said, and I want us to just quickly turn because I want to read it exactly from the Bible from 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 9 because I really want to take us to the scripture tonight. Verse 9 of 1 Samuel 1. So Anna rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. Verse 10. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Hallelujah. So the Bible said, Anna rose up. She stood up in her crisis because she had had enough. She had had enough of being barren. She had had enough of the bullying and the problems from Peniah. She had had enough of a husband who did not get it at all. She had had enough of being the object of people's pity, because sometimes oh, yeah. when you're going through a crisis, people say, poor her, sorry for you, you see. Anna had had enough. 
she had had enough of pain to last her a thousand lifetimes. So the Bible said, Anna rose up. It meant Anna stood up. And in our crisis, I don't want us to lie down and to give up, but I want us to stand up in the midst of our crisis and trust in the Lord. The psalmist said, they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. Yeah. I want us to stand. And there are many Anna stood up moments in the Bible. I want us to look at Moses. Moses standing before Pharaoh, the strongest man on the face of the earth, and saying to that king, the Lord said, let my people go. Moses had to stand up in a crisis. It is Esther agreeing to appear before the king on behalf of her people, the Jews, and said, if I perish, I perish, but I must see the king. I want us in our crisis to stand up because we must stand up in these times. It is David, a mere shepherd boy, at the time of facing down the giant Goliath. Let me tell you, my brethren, in this time of crisis, we're going to face some Goliaths. Hallelujah. And while David was saying to King Saul, Your Majesty, the Philistine should not turn us into cowards. I will go and fight him myself. I want, up to, want us to raise up tonight. Rise up like warriors. I want us to march on. Do not give up. Do not fret. We are not cowards. We are mighty because we serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 It is Jesus setting his face like a flint toward Jerusalem. At this point, he put the devil, the flesh, and the world on notice. He was going to the cross for you and I to die so that you and I could have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. There and then rise again victorious over death, hell, and the grave, so that you and I will have this privilege tonight to be a part of the family of God. Hallelujah. And so, what was the first thing Anna did after she stood up? Because some of us, we stand up, or we still have all. The Bible said, she went before God in prayer. Really does the Bible detail an individual prayer as it does the prayer of Hannah. Oh, glory to God. And so I wanted to remember that when Anna was going to her barrenness, when Anna got up from her prayer, and the Bible said further on that Elkanah knew his wife and God remembered her. Hallelujah. And so we want to have a closer look at Anna's prayer. Anna prayed in bitterness of soul. She was in deep anguish. I want us to note the intensity of Anna's prayer in her crisis. Because some of us, we go into the crisis, but we don't start praying yet. We call everybody, we honor our phones, but we don't start praying yet. The Bible said, Anna prayed, Anna wept before the Lord. She made a vow. She kept on praying and praying. She was praying in her heart. She poured out her soul to the Lord. She prayed out in great anguish and grief. This is a picture of a woman desperate to get a remedy for her pain, her shame, and her bitterness. All too often, as Christians, we try to handle life's challenges with some simple little prayer. Like when we're doing the prayer for grace, God is great, God is good, let us thank him for our food. This is not the time to pray those prayer. This is no time to teach our children to pray mama and pray papa. Because really, does such prayer stir us up, much less move God. When we pray, brethren, we need to move Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. And so when Anna prayed, she didn't pray from her mouth. Because sometimes we talk too much. But the Bible said, she cried from the depths of her soul. Hallelujah. I heard Jane said, the prior of a righteous man availed much. 
Anna prayed not just any prayer, but she prayed sacrificially. She said, God, if you answer my prayer, and if you give me that son, I'll give him back to you. She made a vow, and she did not defer to pay, because many times we have prayed our prayers. And when the Lord started to bless us, we forget the prayers we prayed. But I want us to understand that the God that I serve, he does not have a problem with his memory. He remembers every prayer you have prayed from you were a child. And the Lord has been answering our prayers. We have made some vows to God and we keep on breaking them. But the Bible said, Anna prayed sacrificially. Anna also prayed specifically. She said, God, I want a son. Hallelujah. And finally, Anna prayed expectantly, believing that God will answer her prayer. And God did, because first Samuel is a story being told by Samuel and her son himself. Hallelujah. No, brethren, in the time of Anna, Israel also was in a crisis. Like what is happening to us in our world today. There is a pandemic crisis, but there's another crisis. Many persons have turned their hearts away from God. And so in that time of crisis, while Israel was going through their crisis, Anna was going through her own personal crisis. Hallelujah. The Bible teaches us that the days were evil. Everyone did that which was right in their own eyes. Even the priesthood under Eli was corrupted. Not only was Anna barren, but Israel was barren too. Israel had lapsed into its dark ages. And I watch the pandemic and COVID-19 from last year. Many churches, their doors were shut. Many oh, churches God. were not online. Many persons went back into darkness. And I want us to understand that the COVID-19 crisis, crisis is not the major crisis now, but it's a crisis of persons who need to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Christians awake. Zion awake. Trim our lamps. Let us go forth into all the world. We now have a platform where we can reach others, not only in our nation, but far and wide. And so I want us to understand a barren woman, Anna, she became an invisible woman. Lord Jesus, sometimes when we're going through a crisis, Lord, we feel like we are alone. We feel like God has forgotten us. But I want us oh, to understand God. God has not forgotten us virtue. Hallelujah. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. In that time of her crisis, she was a bullied victim. A person who went in to pray from her heart and she was accused of being drunk. But the Bible said, with all of those things, the Bible said, Anna stood up to pray. I pray that the church of the living God will stand up to pray in this time of crisis. Hallelujah. And when Anna stood up to pray in her crisis, all heaven came to attention. Hallelujah. Not oh, only did yes. the Lord open her womb, but he eventually opened a foundation of blessing on Israel through her son, Samuel. What a mighty God. Christ in the crisis of a firm foundation. And so the Bible said, Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. He was also a man of prayer. Hallelujah. And he heard the voice of God. We know the story. Oh, God called Samuel. And we want us to, I want you to understand tonight. Because as I move out of Samuel, we want to look at our foundation. It was Samuel who would anoint David to be king over all Israel. And eventually, hallelujah, from David would come an even greater king. The king of all kings, the Lord of all laws, 
the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, and he's the same Christ that we have in our crisis today. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because Anna stood up and prayed. Hallelujah. The Lord opened up her womb. She became blessed. She had five more children. I pray tonight, brethren, that whatever crisis you're going through, whoever is in your life, whatever that Pinaya is, I pray now in the name of Jesus that we'll unseat her in the name of Jesus and we give God the glory. Let God arise tonight and let our enemies and every Pinaya in our lives be scattered in the name of Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. And so tonight, we declare in the theme that Christ is our firm foundation. I want to ask us a question tonight. Do you have any cracks in your foundation from the crisis that you have been through? And I want you to stop and reflect a little. Do you have any crack in your foundation? Because we are saying that Christ is our firm foundation. But I want us to understand because Jesus in St. Matthew 7 and the ending of St. Matthew 7 from verses 24 to 27, Jesus concludes his sermon by speaking of two foundations constructed by two builders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of those builders was wise and the other, Jesus says, was foolish. And when Jesus is speaking, he doesn't play with words. Because many of us call ourselves wise virgins. But if the truth be told, we are foolish. Hallelujah. I pray tonight that this conference will wake us up and cause us to trim our lambs and become wise in the, in the eyes of Christ Almighty. And so Jesus spoke about the two builders. He said, both houses went through the same crisis. Hallelujah. They both received the same violent forces from nature. Hallelujah. They received high floods, strong winds, and the movement of the earth around each house were the same for both of the houses. Hallelujah. The difference, however, between standing in the face of adversity and pressure from situations and falling down and being swept away is the design and the location of our foundation. Let me ask us again, Rachel. What kind of a foundation do you have? Hallelujah. Can your foundation withstand the crisis around us? Hallelujah. Can that foundation withstand the forces of nature? Can your foundation stand up to the storms of this life? Hallelujah. We all know how important foundations are when building our houses. If we are going to build a large building or if we are going to build a bridge, hallelujah. We have seen some bridges built right here in Jamaica that could not stand up to the storms and the pressures of life. But when we build our foundation on Jesus Christ, hallelujah, we are safe and secure from all the storms raging around us. And let me tell you, brethren, since we have stepped into 2021, the storms have been raging. But thanks be to God, we have, we have confirmed through this conference that we have been, we are built on the foundation of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if we have a structure and the foundation is not firm, it will not withstand the forces of nature and the process of aging. And what I found out is that as some Christians age, and as they get older, they actually get far from God. My brethren, my oh, sister, God. I want us to draw nearer. Some man says, draw me nearer 
nearer, blessed Lord, to your precious feet inside. Side. I don't want us as we get older to stop reading our Bible. We need to read our Bibles. We need to feed on the word of God. I don't want to see us excuse. But the doctor said, the greatest doctor we have is Dr. Jesus. Hallelujah. I think as a church, we need to trust God more. And watch how we behave with the natural physical curfew. We are willing to obey the curfew of the land. But when God curfew us and Paul sure. says fast and pray, we say what the doctor said. I tear down every lie that the enemy has planted in our lives tonight. Lord, God. In the name of Jesus, let God be served in reverence and with fear. And let us learn to fear God. Because I find that right now, we are fearing man more than how we are fearing God. Brethren, let us trust in the name of Jesus. The name of the Lord is a strong power. The righteous run in and they are saved. And so from very early in our Christian walk, I want us to trust God and to have a spiritual rock solid foundation. Our faith must be in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ever since we started this pandemic, I've gone to the house of the Lord and I've said to the brethren, let us raise our shield of faith. Hallelujah. I want us to put up our hands and naturally said, I raise my shield of faith tonight in the name of Jesus. When we raise our shield of faith, hallelujah, we are saying to God, I trust you and I know that you will keep me till the end of time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so many times, the foundation that we think we have is not solid. We do not trust God enough. We don't even know how to trust him by faith. If we go to work, hallelujah. I don't know, no life for most, I'm a teacher. Before I get the salary done, thank you, Jesus. But what I've learned to do, I give the Lord his portion first. And to be honest with you, brethren, sometimes I give him last. And let me tell you from my experience, if you ever give God last, you never give God. Hallelujah. And I want us tonight to raise our shield of faith in every area of our life and trust God. Oh God, so many times I've not trusted you, but I pray tonight, God, that you will forgive me in the name of Jesus. Sometimes as Christians, we worry more than we pray. Some man caught the vision. Why worry? When we can pray, we have learned to trust in man, but not in the most high God. If many of us just know who God is, we would serve him more with reverence and the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. But we have learned to serve God with a measure of disrespect because when we serve him with worries and doubts, we do not trust God. Hallelujah. It's important, brethren, for us to serve God. Especially in a time of crisis. In this time, God, in this time that we're living in, we need to remember to tithe because the Bible said, the Lord will rebuke the devourer for our sake. <laughs> Let me tell you this, brethren, many of us we not start to serve God yet. I want us to look at this convention. Let this convention allow us to become reflective practitioners as we reflect on our life with Christ, our journey, and ask ourselves tonight, am I on that rock solid foundation of Jesus Christ? Because when we rob God, we're not on the foundation. When we tell lie, we are some Christian and lie, and lie, and lie. But Jesus, he sent his own blood so that you and I, we can get down at the foot of the cross and let his blood wash us and cleanse us so that when we come before him, 
we come before him worthy. I want us to stand up tonight and pray. Sometimes as Christians, we do not care our faith. We do not care our foundation. And it is in need of repair. The conference is to allow us to repair our foundation. Maybe at some point, the foundations of our lives need to be reinforced, need to be rebuilt. We refuse to let God change us from the inside out. And this suggests that we have weak foundations. If God can change our hearts, we are in serious trouble. Hallelujah. Tonight, in this conference, I want us to invite the inspector in. The inspector is God Almighty. I want us tonight to give God permission to take us on a tour of our life. The songman said, roll back the curtains of memories now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. I want us tonight to allow Inspector Jesus to tour our house, hallelujah. Let him look in all the rooms of our lives. Let him unlock every door, invite him in, hallelujah. I want us to give Inspector Jesus the key to our life that he can reinforce us tonight and rebuild us in the name of Jesus. Let us, brethren, give God control of our lives. Once we have invited Inspector Jesus in, we need to show up the foundation by establishing and maintaining a strong relationship with Jesus. Look here. When Jesus is in our lives, we have to maintain that relationship. We can pray only when we feel like. We have to stand up like Anna and have the conversations with God every minute, every day. Someone said, I am praying, blessed Savior, to be more and more like you. We want to ensure that we maintain a strong relationship with Jesus. God Almighty, many of us, we have lost our way in this crisis. But I, tonight, I give you the oil of joy. I give you joy tonight, brethren, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We need strength in this crisis. Hallelujah. And it is critical. And when we invite Jesus the inspector in, we can't afford to skip any step. We can reinforce our structure by investing in the primary relationships of our lives. Let us not ignore the warnings and the danger signs that may signal that our foundations have cracked. If you find yourself with destructive thoughts, watch it, my brethren. New temptations or disintegrating relationships. These are God's way of warning us of a crack in our foundation. Sometimes God sends a earthquake to shake us up. It's not even, it's a matter of if we'll have earthquakes and crisis in our lives. But is when I pray that when the earthquake comes, we our foundation will be solid. Oh God Almighty. And when the shaking comes, we'll still be on that firm foundation of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, if we rest on that foundation, Christ the rock. The song man said, On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. When we stand on Christ the rock, he will absorb the shocks that will come our way in the crisis. Though we may sway, so though we will tremble, sometimes we will come afraid, but God will help us to stand even in the time of crisis, in times of intense pressure. My brethren, I want us tonight to say with confidence that Christ is in my crisis and I'm resting 
on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. I pray tonight that we'll take heed. And to my unsafe friends, tonight is your night to give your heart to Christ. Your foundation is shaky if it's not on Jesus. It will not stand in this time. And I beg you, my unsafe virgin, to come now and let Christ come into your hearts that you too will enjoy the beauty of a solid foundation. God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Amen. For this landing this evening. Hallelujah. Come on. Glory. Give God yeah. some praise. Bless give God be the some name worship. of the Lord. Glory. Amen. Give him Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let him hear what is said. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And as his children, we have a responsibility to respond, mm. amen, to that which has been spoken, amen, to align ourselves, amen, to the will of God, to align ourselves, amen, to the purpose of God so that, amen, his word, amen, can manifest in our lives. We indeed want to give God thanks, amen, for international ladies, President Minister Janet Taylor, amen, praise God for Allowing the Lord, amen, to speak through her this evening and to speak to our hearts, amen. The word resonated, brethren, amen. And if you understood while she ministered, you'd recognize, amen, that the Lord is speaking expressly to his yes. people, amen. And if our ears are spiritually closed, we are going to miss the plane. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. When I pray this evening, amen, that our ears will be spiritually open so that having hearing amen the word of god amen we can allow the word of god to take root and to manifest in our lives and to make us better christians better children of god thank you jesus amen praise god i'm going to ask our international men's president overseer steve Ferren at this time to just come amen and do the closing prayer after he's through praying amen we'll be having the vote of thanks and then i'll be asking or overseer Colin James to prepare, amen, to do the benediction for us this evening. Praise God. Uh, Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us, let us, let us just give God Hannah glory this glory to evening God. for such a lovely evening, for such a word that have been spoken by the woman of God. It's truly wonderful what the Lord yes. has done. Glory and we say God. glory to his name, the name of the Lord. It's truly God has really, minister, God has really moved to this weekend and we can say our soul is really blessed. And this evening, let us continue and remain and bask in the presence of God. Let us pray. Praise God. Gracious, eternal God and Holy Father, we're thankful for this evening. We're thankful, Almighty God, that you have been with us, Almighty God, from the beginning of this conference. Father, your, your presence has dwelt with us. Praise Father, this evening, we just want to thank you, God, for all the presenters, the moderators, the exalters, Almighty God. We thank you, this Almighty God. Thank you this evening for the planning team, Almighty God, that come together and put this conference together. Almighty God, we just ask, Lord, that you will continue to show yourself strong, continue to show yourself mighty, Almighty God. As we come to a close, one more this evening, God. Father, the devil lost a battle. You have won, you have won a victory, Almighty God. Father, the writers have proved the doubters wrong that you are still mighty and strong. So, Father, we just ask, Lord, that your presence will continue to be with us. Continue to bless, Almighty God, our international ladies, present president, and her family, Almighty God, and her executive team, Almighty God. Continue to give strength and courage, Almighty God. And likewise, Almighty God, bless the men, Almighty God, as they continue, Lord, to do your will, Almighty God. We pray for this organization.
creation. We pray for this body of people, Almighty God, that your holy presence, Almighty God, will continue to lead us. We know, God, we cannot do nothing of our own, but God, through your God, all things are possible. Father, as we go to God, know that you are our firm foundation, Almighty God. We will rest upon you, Almighty God. We will continue in your presence, Almighty God, knowing that, Lord, our foundation will uh, is unshakable because it is in you, Almighty God, and it will not break, Almighty God. Amen. It is fixed, Almighty God. So we Hallelujah. convince and we move out of this confidence conference, Almighty God. Fix and firm, Almighty God. We move from this conference, God, being assured that God, we are standing on the solid rock, Almighty God. We move from this conference, assured that God, that you are with us in our difficult time. You are with us in our crisis, Almighty God. We move from this conference, Almighty God, that our, that our crisis is what bring us to our knees. Our crisis is what bring us close to you, Almighty God. So we, God, as we move, Almighty God, we know, Lord, we have the assurance, Almighty God, that victory belongs belongs to the body of Christ. Victory belongs Hallelujah. to the people of God. So Father, we just thank you this morning, moment, God, that we are fighting from victory unto victory, Almighty God, because we are in you and we are eternally secure, Almighty God. So our confidence, our faith is in you. So we just put this conference as it comes to a close in your hand. We put everyone that participate in your hand, Almighty God, and we pray for your blessing upon us as we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. And we say... Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God, thank you, Overseer Steve Fair and his brethren. We can all Amen. Amen. join in as if we're singing a chorus to say, God has been good. Amen. For having us gather the way we gather for the weekend. Amen. Praise God. Celebrate him under the theme, Christ in the crisis, my firm foundation and i'm sure amen this theme is not only confined to this weekend but i'm sure even as we continue to reflect we will continue to unearth different things that can amen be derived from this theme whether personally or even collectively in our family and even among our different congregations god has been good and so at this time i'm going to be doing the vote of thanks indeed we want to express our heartfelt gratitude Amen to everyone who has shared, who has joined, amen, have participated, whatever you have done, amen, to cause this weekend celebration to be a reality. We are eternally grateful. I know many of us, amen, have made sacrifices. There are some engagements that we have had from Friday to now that we perhaps would have postponed or totally canceled just so that we could be able to join and to share and so I know that no sacrifice that we have made for God will go unnoticed or unrewarded. And so we trust God, amen, that as we make the sacrifice that he, amen, will reward us, amen. And if you are a teacher this evening, like myself, we know that the lesser plans have, have to be written, amen. And if they have not started yet, many of us will be burning the midnight oil. And amen, many of us who have other work engagements may have to be doing some double hours double this hour. evening but god has been faithful and so we know that he will strengthen us and enable us to do all that we have amen. to do we give god thanks for bishop and general overseer bishop arthur brown and his wife pastor beverly brown amen for their support throughout this weekend all the overseers and the pastors and the ministers amen we bless god for you for taking the time out to share with us and to do whatever you could so that we could have Amen. This weekend celebration. I want to give God thanks on Friday evening. We had our moderator from the Toronto Canada Assembly, Deacon Powell. We bless God for him. Our speaker for that evening was our own minister, O'Shane Sinclair. We bless God for him too, who brought such a profound word to us Friday evening. All our exhorters, amen, we shared on that evening. Amen. God bless you richly on Saturday. Our sister Lorna Blair, amen. God bless you, my sister, who, amen, moderated skillfully for us. And oh, we had our speaker for that day session, Pastor Dr. Beverly Taylor, amen, who brought such a wonderful word to our hearts. And I want to tell you, Pastor Beverly Taylor, that you're one of my wife's favorite female preachers, amen. I guess you will see her one of these days, praise God. And so we bless God for, amen, the wonderful word that you brought to us on Saturday. We give God thanks for Minister Damon and his wife, Cheryl Harrison, who steered that afternoon session, amen, and our overseer, Roshin McLean, who did such an excellent and 
amen wonderful presentation for that cycle of social presentation amen many persons have benefited from that session immensely and we amen give god thanks for him and his family and pray that god will continue to use him amen to do that which he has committed himself to do praise god thank you jesus in the evening we had our sister sinclair who did such an exceptional job amen moderating that service and our own sister chisan aleman thompson amen who amen express herself under the anointing and did amen as the lord led her amen last evening to share with us we know by now the lord has re-energized her and restored all the energy that she used and give her a new anointing amen for the other engagement that will come god bless you richly all our exhorters we also bless god for you on sunday today that was in the in the sanctuary at short of the road we had our own minister Steve McAlpin, who is also the national vice president and the chairperson on the national executive board of the men's department. God bless you richly, sir. Our own international men's president overseer, Steve Ferran, who, amen, gave us that wonderful, solid, profound, inspirational word this morning. Hallelujah. Your foundation is great. You are not built to break. Amen. That continue to resonate. Amen. God bless you richly, sir. All our exhorters who shared today, amen, the Lord bless you richly. In our testimonial session, we had our sister Herlock who steered that session and all those persons who gave your testimonies, the Lord bless you. May you continue to testify as the word of God declared. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple who oh, bless the name of Jesus. This evening, amen, myself and my co-moderator, sister Shakila Solomon, Amen. Steer this evening session, and I bless God for her. Amen. Yes, I see her putting on that wonderful smile. Amen. God bless you, my sister. And we just got that word from our own international women's president, Minister Janet Taylor. What a way to land. Amen. This evening, and we just praise God for this woman servant who just spoke. Amen. Without without any doubt. Amen. Spoke with such confidence and such assertion. Amen. To in, and have us to understand that as believers, we need to assert ourselves so that God, amen, can be glorified through us. And it was such a challenging word that I, I hope that we have taken the challenge, amen, and that we'll run with it this evening. God bless you, amen, Minister Janet Taylor and your family. We give God thanks for exhorting, amen. This evening we had our sister Chelsea Halliman James, amen, who testified. Amen. And God bless you as you continue. Amen. To go in uncharted waters. Amen. We thank God for all our regions. Regions one, two, three, four, five. But allow me to give some emphasis to region five. Amen. Region five, all our international brothers and sisters. Amen. Who, amen. Maybe you have paused your engagements. Perhaps you have canceled some just to ensure that you were able to join and trust me we are indeed grateful for your support for your for your presence albeit virtually amen but your your, your support amen is noted and is only god in his infinite wisdom would have allowed such a realization of this wonderful fellowship because although we are virtually connected there's a something supernatural about this connection that is just phenomenal. And God bless you all richly as you continue, amen, to hold your hand over there across the waters. Amen. We want to give God thanks for all our executive members of both departments, ladies and men's department who work assiduously oh, before this weekend and throughout this weekend to ensure that we had a wonderful time, myself and sister Chelsea Halliman James, amen, had a lot of back and forth just to ensure that we had all the coordination, our president, amen, and all the board presidents and all the officers. God, amen, will indeed acknowledge your efforts, your labor, and all that you did to ensure that God be glorified. Because one of the things we have to stop to acknowledge, brethren, is that all the efforts that have come together has one paramount objective, and it's to give glory to God and to God alone. Praise the name of Jesus. All our technical persons, those who work from the physical sanctuary and those who work in the virtual space, just to ensure 
that we had connection and that our connection was sustained. Amen. Even when the internet chip every now and then, we thank God. Amen. That it didn't disturb the worship. It didn't disturb the praise. And God, amen, still get all the glory and all the praise. All our visitors who joined and all our unsaved, amen. We thank God for you. And we believe, amen, by the grace of God that we have had some conversion. Persons who came unsaved and have been converted to save. We believe God and we trust God for that. And we believe that there shall be a manifestation of that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thanks to all the persons who contribute. Amen. Whether you contribute monetarily, whether you contribute with your time, whether you prayed, whatever you did, the Lord bless you immensely. Whatever you did is noted and is highly appreciated. Let me know, amen, as our men's and international presidents, Overseer Steve Ferrin and Minister Janet Taylor. This is a historic convention. It is the first of its kind, a combined men's and women's conference. And perhaps we may never have another one. We don't know. But we want to applaud these two wonderful servants of the Lord, amen, who came together. Amen. We know that nothing goes without challenge, but we thank God that through the challenges we have overcome as we, amen, read in that very same text, Romans 8 and 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. And, and, and it's, not, it's not coincidence that that word we is there because it, 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 it suggests a collective effort. We are more than conquerors through God. So God bless you richly. Whatever role you played, we indeed appreciate your efforts, your contribution, your time, and we just bless God for all of you. Now I'm going to call on Overseer Colin James to pronounce the evening's benediction. And praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Know me the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the full fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Rest remain and abide us all, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Greet each other, the Lord bless you. Amen. Until we meet again. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise someone, everyone. The Lord bless you.